Hello friends, how's everybody doing today? I'm happy to say that I'm doing quite well. Eight years ago, eight whole years ago, when this channel first started, I made a couple of videos making sort of modular freestanding doorways. I made one that was meant for mines or caves and another one that was more gothic arch shaped. But what I've never done, even to this day, despite being asked so many times, is made a video on classic stone arched doorways that would be, you know, your typical generic kind of dungeon door. Mostly because I could never really come up with a way to do it that I didn't find somewhat annoying or that wouldn't be too difficult to relay in a video. I thought many times about how to do it with different jigs and whatnot. The problem with cutting out arches with jigs is that you don't get these individual, like different width pieces of stone that really make something like this look good. But yesterday I was playing around, just cutting up some foam and I came up with a system that I'm really happy with. It looks good. It's not very difficult to make. I think I can explain it to you well enough and it's efficient. You can make a lot really quickly. I made my prototype and a few extras plus the raw materials to make many more in just a couple hours. So I'm finally at a point where I feel comfortable showing you how to make arched stone modular doorways out of simple XPS foam. Hey, I just need to briefly interrupt this video so that I can make some money to pay for my snacks at Adepticon. This video, like many of mine, is sponsored by Into the AM. Now they mainly specialize in graphic tees, which always have really vibrant prints in a really high quality. Now they're always adding new stuff to the store and, and I can't recommend these enough if you just want some fun t-shirts that are comfy and affordable. But what I really like from them are their hoodies. They're super comfortable, they fit really well, they're nice and plain looking, and they're a good price. What I like even more is that they've recently added flannel button-up shirts. They're real good. They're thicker than the other ones I usually order online, and the sleeves are long enough to fit tall guys like me. But like, who am I to say what's a good flannel shirt and what isn't? Well, I'd like to remind you that I live in Canada and not just in Canada, but in the coldest city in Canada. And I literally live in a forest. So I think I'm qualified to judge flannel shirts and these ones are good. So you should go check out into the AM link in the description and don't Google it. Use the link in my description because then you'll get 10% off your entire order and 10% off is better than no percent off. This build requires you to break down foam into four specific pieces. I didn't exactly measure these, but I know that it's important for people to have some frame of reference for measurement. The main small brick is 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter and approximately five millimeters thick. The second larger brick is 10 millimeter by about 13 millimeter and 10 millimeter thick. And then you have these wedge arch shaped pieces that are 10 millimeter thick, approximately 18 millimeter on the widest point and approximately eight millimeter on the lowest point. Doesn't have to be exact, but that is a reference starting point for you. And base pieces, which are 70 millimeters long by about 25 millimeters and five millimeters thick. You're gonna wanna make a whole bunch of these in advance. This is the most time consuming part, but once you do this, you can make a ton of these. So to make the main small bricks, you wanna cut some foam into strips that are 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter. Once you have a handful of these 10 millimeter foam strips, I'd recommend laying them flat and texturing every size with some foil or a stone. This is an opportunity just to more easily add texture than later once they're cut up. Once you have these strips textured, you can then slice them to your thickness, which again is about five mil. And when I was doing this, I was just using the guide on the hot wire table itself to show me my 10 mil and eyeball half that, etc. You can take a bunch of these strips at the same time and run them through at your thickness and get a large supply of these small bricks. You're then going to need to do a very similar task for the larger bricks. Just this time, you want to make those strips 
10 millimeter by say your 12 to 13 mil. Just make them wider than the main ones. And again, texture them and then cut them into individual bricks that are about 10 mil thick. The arches are a little bit trickier. There's many ways you can cut an arch on a hot wire. I just set an angle, ran a strip through, cut one side and then flipped it around, cut the other side to make a big pointed wedge. And then to cut that point down so that it's flat and the overall brick is a size that I want, I used one of the cutoff pieces to put the foam together so they could run the foam through and make this right angle on the wedge. And then last, you know, you got your base pieces, just cut a foam block to the length and width that you want and then cut a bunch of slices, making sure they're at least five millimeters thick so they're not too floppy. Once you've done that, assembly is gonna be really easy. Grab one of your wedge bricks and four of your small bricks. Take two of the small bricks and pinch them to make them kind of wedge shaped. You need a bit of an angle on these stones to create the arch. And rather than cutting them, you can just save yourself a lot of time and hassle by pinching one side to make them wedge shaped. Take a very small amount of hot glue. And when using the hot glue on this build, you wanna use a low temperature glue gun with a fine point and be delicate and try not to get a whole bunch of strands everywhere. Just add a little dot, pull away, and then stick your pieces together, squish them once again to create an even stronger wedge shape. And you wanna do this twice so that you have two of these wedges that you will then glue to your top piece. And the trick here is aligning the inside edge on the arch. Once you have your little bricks added to each side, you wanna grab two more wedge pieces and attach those in place. Again, lining up the inside edge. Four more little bricks that you are going to squish and put together just like you did a moment before. And you're gonna attach those to the bottom side of the arch. Now, grab two of your larger bricks and attach those, keeping the inside edge flush so that they protrude on the outside. Then you're just gonna stack three small bricks for each side. No squishing, just keep these ones straight. And then again, grab two more bricks, apply them the same way you did on the last ones, keeping them flush on the inside, and you are left with an archway. You can add some more texture at this point if you'd like. And if your arch is a little bit wonky, that's okay. We're gonna fix that when we put it on the base. Take some tin foil or stone, texture your base, and then put a little dot of hot glue on each end of your arch and just eyeball it centered on your base and hold it in place. It's up to you if you want those side arches protruding or to be flush. If you want them to be flush, you can just easily with a knife cut them flush. After that, you are left with a quite nice looking foam arch that surprisingly stands very, very well. They're not very heavy, so they can be blown, which is not great. If you'd like, you can put some metal washers on the bottom to give it some weight. You might wanna recess them though, so it doesn't pick the whole thing up. Uh, you could also take some small finishing nails, drive them through the bottom up into this foam here, and that'll add a little bit of bottom weight to make them stand a little bit better if you need. And then just paint them um, using whatever painting scheme you usually use. I just quickly airbrushed one with black primer, then mixed in some white ink to highlight it with a gray, and then added some green and brown ink to quickly sort of weather it. And it looks pretty darn good. It might seem like this is really tedious, but I personally found it to be a pretty enjoyable build to make while watching something. And I notoriously dislike tedious projects where you're doing the same thing over and over again. This didn't bother me at all. Like assembling one of these arches only takes a couple minutes. So if you can dedicate, you know, like an hour to make a whole bunch of raw material, you can then sit there and quickly make a ton of these. And of course you can customize them as you wish. This is just like the basic generic arch that I think works best for all sorts of situations. And that's it, a quick little easy build for you this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you make some. Feel free to let me know in the comments section if you have any other ideas or ways that you make these yourself. Share this video with your gaming friends and groups, and of course, like the video. If you wanna pick up some tools and supplies like a Proxon hot wire cutter to 
or glue gun to make this with. I encourage you to do that through the links on blackmagiccraft.ca. They have an essential equipment page. Those are Amazon affiliate links. And when you buy through them, the channel earns a small commission that actually helps fund the production of these videos. So I'd really appreciate you doing your shopping that way. And if you like what I do and you wanna help me keep making it, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel by joining the Black Magic Craft Patreon. I'd love to have you there. Wishing you all the best and I will see you again next time. Cheers.